This video has been sponsored by Surfshark. Now I've been putting this job off for way too long now and I want this car done and on the road so we need to crack on with it. Look, we've got to get a few of the other unfinished projects out of here before we can crack on with this unfinished project. It's actually surprisingly quiet on idle. Now that is a proper noise. <laughs> oh, we are flat. No! Okay, so on the last video on the GT86, I started fitting a replica rocket bunny kit to it. Now one side is kind of on, it does need a few touches here and there, but being that this is the first time fitting a wide body kit by myself, I don't think I've done too bad. But as for the other side, well, <laughs> I've not even begun to start this side yet. Now there's still a lot of work to do to the rear of the car, including the diffuser as well. But more importantly, I need to get this side on before we crack on with anything else. Loving how you wind up for me. So we're just gonna crack straight into this. No messing around today. Start chopping the arches and fitting the rest of the kit. Now, if you're wondering what the hell I'm doing, I suggest you go back and watch the previous video on this. But after many hours of cutting, chopping, and drilling, the other side was finally complete. Oh, and after hours of graft, the passenger side is finally on. This is taking a lot longer than expected. It is a lot harder than it looks. I know it's just looking like I'm hacking away a car with an angle grinder and a drill, but it does take a lot more time than that. But at least now we have a full GT86 with a rocket bunny kit on. Well, kind of. We've still got a little bit more to go. And there's a few imperfections. When I say a few, I mean, well, quite a lot. But hopefully we can get this car down and out of here so we can drive it to Colorcraft where they're going to be sorting out the imperfections and also getting this thing primed and ready for paint. Okay, so onto the part that stumped us in the last video. The Rocket Bunny rear diffuser. This is a lot more aggressive than the standard diffuser. The standard diffuser is part of the bumper, so that means this diffuser is going to have to be cut off for this one to fit, so it's a full send job. This one is a lot shorter than that one, so we're going to have to sort of modify and fabricate it to fit. I would have bottled this a few months or years ago. I'm just going to send it now. Come on. Okay, first things first, we need to remove the old diffuser by cutting it off with a Dremel. I've actually left a bit on the top because that's where the new diffuser will bolt to. My idea was to cut the new diffuser into three pieces, bolt the middle piece on, then bolt the two side pieces and fill the gap in between. And hopefully this should make it the correct size and fit properly. <sighs> Have you ever started a job and then just instantly regretted it afterwards? <laughs> well, this is exactly what's happening right now. I guess this is what I get for buying a replica rocket bunny kit and not a genuine one, but here's the diffuser here, I've sort of bolted it on, it's sort of meant to sit like that. The top end does not sit flush with the bumper at all. Then I've got to sort of fuse the end bits together, um, like here and well, under there it just, well, it, it just don't work. So now I've cut the rear diffuser off, the standard one, which is connected to the bumper, which means I have no rear diffuser to put on. So either I find an aftermarket rear diffuser that I can bolt on, which fits better than this, or we go for the other solution, which I'm sort of favoring. Okay, so on screen now is option number two, which I think looks really good. What people do is they completely delete the rear diffuser. Then you've got an exposed crash bar. You replace the standard crash bar with this aftermarket one, which looks really good. Then you can use that to jack up the car to change the rear wheels when you're at a drift event or something like that. And this is the sort of route I want to take with the GT86. So let's do it. The only thing is, we've got to clean up this rear diffuser first. Okay, <laughs> we now have no diffuser. It looks ridiculous at the minute, but I need you guys to trust the process. Yes, we've gone one step back, but we will be going two steps forward. Please, come on, trust the process. Well, this build is becoming definitely one of the most challenging ones yet, and it's really testing my skills, but you know what? I love it, and that's my job. It even sounds weird to say that uploading videos onto YouTube is my job, and that's why one of my worst fears is being hacked. But I could be 100% confident that that is not gonna happen because I use Surfshark who has sponsored today's video. What's Surfshark? Well, Kevin, let me explain. 
Surfshark is a VPN tool. Now VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. That means it encrypts all the data sent via the internet so no one can steal your passwords, steal your videos, view your private messages, or see what you're doing online. Now if you think public Wi-Fi is safe, then you're wrong. Public Wi-Fi is a gold mine for hackers, but not when using Surfshark. And not only can it protect you from hackers, it can also do cool things like this. So let's say you've watched all of the good films on Netflix and you want to watch a classic like Rocky, but it's not available in the UK. Well, if you go over to the top right hand corner to Surfshark, change your browsing location to Canada, go back onto Netflix, refresh it, search again for Rocky, and what do you know, it's there to watch. So to get Surfshark today, you've got to do two things. One is click the link in the description box below, and two is use code Matt Armstrong, and you're going to get yourself 83% off, plus an extra three months for free. And there's a 30 day money back guarantee, so there is literally no risk. Once again, thanks Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Let's crack on with the GTA. Okay, suspension. So, stock suspension is a no-go. It's too soft and the rider is too high. We need to lower this thing and we also need to stiffen it up as well. We need to be able to go sideways on cue in this car. So, I've gone for teen coilovers. These are ride height adjustable, so they can go up or down. And also, the damper adjusts as well. Using this little knob on top here, we can make the ride softer or harder, which is perfect. I'm gonna have it as stiff as possible. We're gonna fit them to the GT86. Hopefully, it all goes to plan. It is pretty rusty, so, well, <laughs> who knows? Let's get to it. So actually changing the suspension on the GC86 is a pretty easy job providing all the bolts come off. First we undo the drop link, then we've got two bolts which hold the hub to the suspension strut. Once these are undone the car could come down and then there's just three bolts holding the top of the strut to the car. Now this part you should only attempt if you're a trained professional because really you should be using spring compressors. But I'm a trained professional. Then we need to assemble the new coilovers by just taking the top mounts off the old suspension and putting it on the new one. Once this is done, I can feed it up onto the frame of the car, bolt the three bolts at the top, put back in the two bolts which hold it to the hub, and as for the drop links, well, we got new shortened adjustable drop links. And tighten it all up, and we're ready to go onto the rears. Now the rears are slightly different to the front. We've got four bolts to undo on the bottom. We've got the anti-roll bar drop link. We've got a sensor for the lights. We've got the bolt for the bottom of the damper and then also the bolt on the bottom of the wheel hubbard as well. Then we need to open the boot of the car, remove all the boot lining to find the two bolts which hold the suspension strut to the actual car. And just undo them and the suspension should fall out. Then onto the train professional part. And now taking the top mounts off the old suspension and putting it on the new one. I guide it up into the car while Hannah put on the two bolts at the top. Then I just needed to add all the bolts at the bottom of the suspension back to the car. Okay, coilovers are on. It wasn't too bad of a job. The ride height is just a guess. Obviously we've got the stock wheels on it at the minute so it doesn't really matter too much about the ride height at the minute. Now the main aim today is to get this on the road, get it to colour craft so they can touch up the bodywork and then also we need to size up the wheels as well. But before we go out on the road, we do have an engine light to attend to. So here is the issue. Now when I first got the car, I plugged in my code reader to see if it had any fault codes. And sure enough, it did have a fault code for the MAF sensor, the mass airflow sensor. This measures the amount of air going into the engine. So if that's faulty, then it'll cause all sorts of issues like a lumpy idle, it wouldn't quite run right. And also, we'd get an engine light. Now here is the MAF sensor, this tiny little sensor here. And you think a little sensor like that on a 2012 Toyota GT86, you think what, maybe 20, 30 quid maximum, 50 quid? <laughs> Wrong. That part was a main dealer only part and it's 250 pound including VAD. This is why there's barely any Toyotas like this on the road. Now luckily, we found a GT86 for braking, local to us, and we got the MAF sensor off it. This is a second-hand MAF sensor, but we got it for 50 quid, which still, I think, is quite expensive for a second-hand MAF sensor. Fingers crossed it works, but there's only one way to find out. Let's just put this on. MAF sensor on. 
Let's see, will it bring the engine light on or off? Will this fix the engine management light issue? We may have to clear it off. I don't know, I don't know how these Japanese cars work. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Come on. Still there. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna give it a minute, see if it goes off, and maybe drive it down the road a bit, but <laughs> we'll probably have to put in the code reader again and just see whether that math sensor fault has gone. It's a good job I didn't pay 250 quid if it's still a math sensor problem, but well, let's get this thing down and out and get it on the road. <laughs> At this point, this is just becoming funny. This is like one of those childhood Need for Speed Tokyo Drift moment where the car you built on the PlayStation game is now becoming a reality. Okay, <laughs> you don't have to be a genius to tell me that it looks ridiculous at the minute, but we're getting there. We've made progress so far. And also, the good news, no engine light or ABS light on the dash anymore, but I can hear the exhaust rattling against the frame somewhere. Just listen. But obviously the exhaust will be changed as well because we need to turbo this thing. So right now it's being a classic UK and it's raining. So we can't actually drive the car just yet because there's tons of holes in it and it just fill up with water. But we have got to get it on the road and we have got to get it to Colour Craft. And we've also got to do a stop off at Wheelmania as well. So give me two seconds, let's wait for the roads to dry and then let's head off to Wheelmania. Okay, so first time driving the 86. <laughs> first time driving a GT86. Let's see if these things are as good as people make out. Okay, so at the minute in the 86, there's a two litre naturally aspirated Subaru engine in it. They're supposed to be really slow, but <laughs> let's find out. Second gear pull. This car is so slow. Come on, GT86! 60! Yes! <laughs> this is so slow. So we arrived at Wheelmania after, well, <laughs> an interesting drive where the guys there were measuring up the wheels to make sure we get the right fitment for the Rocket Bunny kit. Okay, wheel sizes are all sorted now for the GC86. Wheels are on order, they're gonna look good. Let's go to Colorcraft and, uh, well, see what they make of this bodywork. I've got a present for you. What, that? <laughs> yeah. I bet you got some looks driving down here, didn't you? Wow. Well, I'm not asking you to perform miracles, but you might have to with this one. Well, you think that looks great, yeah? That'll be all right, by the time that's welded up and done, that'll be sound. Okay, so quite, a disappointing first drive, it definitely, you know what, it's not quick, it's not quick at all, but you know what, it's going to be fun to drive, but now we've arrived at Colorcraft, where we brought the Maserati to the Liberty Walk kit, and if any of the guys anywhere can sort out the kit on the GT86, well, it's these guys. So this car now is gonna stay here where they're gonna sort out these little imperfections until we'll come and pick it up at a future date where hopefully we can get towards the finished product. So an eventful day on the GT86. Again, if you've enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button. And again, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.